Helen, welcome. You've been looking into how Americans are thinking about AI. What have you found? Um, I love this question. So The Verge did a big representative survey of Americans, how they're using AI, how they're talking about AI. This was as of about May this year, so I think all the numbers have probably gone up dramatically. But what we had already found is, you know, one in three Americans has already tried an AI tool this year. Um, when you look at younger Americans, so millennials, Gen Z, it's more than half of Americans. Um, and when you ask Gen Z just how much are you talking about AI, how much is it in your imagination, in your social network, it is like most people in Gen Z are talking about AI multiple times per week. It's everywhere in the pop culture. Um, and so one thing we found is certainly how big it's gotten very, very quickly. How should Americans or how are they approaching Gen AI in the workplace, professionally speaking, whether that's being threatened by it or working with it? So most Americans immediately see that they think AI will change society in significant ways. More than half of Americans think that AI will impact their jobs. Um, and when you ask people, okay, you've tried start, you've started using these tools. What are you doing with them? Um, you know, the single most important thing people do with AI right now is search. Um, but if you look in aggregate, people are writing emails, they're writing code, they're making audio, video, photo. And so there's this incredible explosion of creative use cases in AI. And so what people are doing at work is they're getting access to creative toolkits they didn't have before. Um, and they're also outsourcing really boring jobs they didn't like to do, transcription, note taking. Um, and so it's gotten very big in the workplace very quickly. But I would say it's not just limited to the kind of basic productivity you might think of. People are getting access to other skill sets they didn't have before, like programming, like animation. Um, and so it's get moving very, very quickly in the workplace. It sounds really great, really exciting, but is there some nervousness around how it might impact jobs? Will we have the right skills to use it properly? Um, absolutely, people are very nervous, and you're seeing AI come up a lot in a labor context, right? We've just had the big strikes going on in Hollywood. One of the big issues is using AI likenesses, how this will replace human jobs. Um, so there's certainly nervousness about that. Um, but on the other hand, there's a lot of people who kind of immediately grasp the utility. Like at The Verge, we have seen a lot of tech trends get really big and buzzy. I think 5G is a great example of this. 5G was everywhere. Everyone wanted to talk about 5G. And explain to me like what 5G did for you. Like, are you doing like robot surgery in your self-driving car across the country? Like you probably can't explain what 5G did for you. Most people who have tried a generative AI tool kind of immediately understand the job it can do for them. Um, and so I think you're gonna see there is that nervousness and certainly people wanna see some safeguards. They want people to be careful. In fact, most people wanna see some level of government regulation in the space but people also kind of immediately understand what they can do with it, how they can use it, how they can put it to work in a way that I think few other recent tech trends have gotten that kind of immediate grasp from people who are like, this is gonna change my life. How is The Verge approaching Gen AI? Um, so The Verge's approach to Gen AI, obviously we are covering this space quite a lot. It's a huge coverage opportunity for us. We just made a really fun podcast mini series about it. We composed an AI pop song live on our podcast. It was incredible. Um, but there's also how we're thinking about it from a business model. You know, I think um, when you think about how people access the internet and how they access content, it is all mediated by search, which means it has been mediated by Google for a very long time, how you access information on the internet. There is a canon of mediocre AI content coming for the internet. Um, and there is questions about how generative search should work um, and what people want from that kind of interaction. Um, that's all cool, scary, interesting. What I think of as The Verge is, okay, my most valuable asset is the direct loyal audience who comes directly to The Verge and engages with my content. Um, and so as we've been thinking about where The Verge needs to go, we've been thinking a lot about how to make an amazing homepage that people want to come back to every day, that does a good job for people every day, um, that is powered by human expertise and curation, which I think is what people come to The Verge for. Um, you know, it's not to say I have broken up with Google search. Definitely a lot of people come to The Verge from search. Um, but as I think about what those people do on The Verge, I want to move them down the funnel pretty quickly into becoming loyal, logged in users. Um, and I think that direct audience relationship is the currency of The Verge. Um, I think other newsrooms, though, like may take the bait of 
it's going to get cheaper and cheaper to make mediocre, mediocre content. And you're seeing this slip in on some of our competitors. Uh, and it turns out AI right now, it plagiarizes, it makes factual mistakes. And I think it's a mistake to go too fast into this um, and undermine the trust of the direct loyal audience because that is the currency of the future. Absolutely fascinating. Helen, thank you so much.